Hog in the Fog. This is the story of Candy Stripe Lil and Harry the Hog who lived over the hill. And a foggy March day, round about three, when Lil had invited Harry for tea. Lil had been busy for hours and hours, piling the treats up in teetering towers. And now all of Harry's favorite snacks were heaped on the table in wobbling stacks. There was a southern fried lizard and earwig fudge, a very large bowl of barnacle sludge. There were chocolate chip beetles and slug flavored chips and warm jellied maggots with fruit flavored dips, dragonflies tongues and a frothy muck shake and leeches on sticks, and a cuttlefish cake. Well, three o'clock came, then a quarter past three, but still Harry hadn't turned up for his tea. Outside the window for miles around, a ghostly haze hung over the ground. Oh dear, cried Lil, even Harry the hog could get himself lost in the thick of that fog. When Harry still hadn't arrived by four, poor Lil didn't think she could wait any more. So she pulled down her candy-striped cap from its hook, put on her raincoat, and set off to look. Pittery-pattery, tippity-tappity, off up the hill went candy-stripe Lil. A sheep sauntered by with her nose to the ground, munching the grass with a soft crunch sound. Excuse me, said Lil, stepping out of her way. Have you seen a hog on your travels today? I have not, said the sheep, but a while back I saw what I think was a hedge where no hedge was before. A hog in the fog won't be easy to find. Why don't I help? I can look out behind. So pittery pattery, tippity tappity, munch crunch, munch crunch, on up the hill went the sheep and Lil. A deer came stepping into the lane. Tack, tack, went his hooves like the tapping of rain. Can I ask, said Lil to the deer, if I may, have you seen a hog on your travels today? All I saw, said the deer, were the wings of a bat, or I think they were wings. They were pinkish and flat. You'll need all the help you can get in this weather. If I come along, we can all look together. So pittery pattery, tippity tappity, munch crunch, tack tack tack. On up the hill went the three of them till a blue black crow swooped over the ground and perched on a tree with a loud quark sound. Can I ask, Lil called to the crow, if I may, have you seen a hog on your travels today? Not a hog, squawked the crow. All I saw was a snake, fast asleep on a log. What I think was a snake. We crows have a wonderful view from the sky. Would you like me to help? I can look while I fly. Crow stretched out his wings, took off from his perch, and circled around to join in the search. Pittery pattery, tippity tappity, munch crunch, tack tack tack, quark. Through the gathering dark, through the gloopy soupy thick of the fog, all four went searching for Harry the hog. By now it was colder. Lil let out a sneeze. A wind was astir in the tops of the trees. As they felt their way forward and tried to go quicker, the fog got thicker and thicker and thicker. Pittery pattery, tippity. Stop! 
Around the next corner, cocooned in the fog, was a thing of some kind, half sunk in a bog. It's the bush, cried sheep. It's the bat, cried deer. It's the snake, squawked crow. It's quite plain from up here. Whatever it is, cried Lil, it's stuck. And they all started hauling it out of the muck shoving and heaving to lift the thing clear, Lil at the front and Sheep at the rear. Inch by inch, bog-soaked mud smeared, more and more of the creature appeared, until, with a nudge, with a pull and a push, one half of the thing emerged with a whoosh, then slippily, slurpily, gluggily, gurgly, out of the bog came Harry the Hog. He told them his story, how he'd walked through the fog and gone snout over trotters into the bog. So you see, he went on, after all of that tumbling, it's hardly surprising my tummy is rumbling. I thank you most kindly for rescuing me. Now I wonder, he said, is there still time for tea? And there was. Here at my house, said Lil with a smile, it stays tea o'clock for a very long while. There's more than enough to go round, as you see. Let the party begin. We can all have tea.